Good afternoon, everybody. Um, well, could be morning as well, depending on uh, where you are. I know we've got um, quite a we've got uh, people joining from all over the the globe, as it were. So um, we're going to crack on here. We might have more people joining us, but. Um, let's get the show on the road as they say. Um, so thanks for joining. What we're going to go through today is uh, just a webinar on how to get the most out of our Safe Titan uh, product. So the session should take about an hour. We'll probably spend about 40 minutes going through the various um, you know, aspects of the product, um, how to set it up, all that. And then we'll probably you know, spend 15 to 20 minutes on taking your questions. So the questions piece we'll actually do throughout the session just to make it slightly more interactive. Um, and then at the end, uh, you know, if we've time at the end, we can we can take more questions as well. So yeah, so let's uh, crack on um, with our session. So if I can just start with some introductions um, from from our team. So uh, my name is Catherine uh, Catherine McGrath, and I'm the customer success director at Titan HQ. Um, I'm joined here today by two of my colleagues who will be doing all the the hard work. Uh, so uh, my colleague Barry O'Sullivan is our uh, product architect for Safe Titan. And my other colleague, uh, Patricia Silva, is our solutions engineer. So um, they're going to be doing all the hard work today. I'll just be sitting back and taking it all in. So um, yeah, so just some housekeeping um, information, I suppose, before we start. So um, you, you should see that on the right hand side of your screen, there is a control panel there. One of the drop down areas from that uh, control panel is a section called questions. So if you just click the arrow uh, beside questions, then type in, you know, we can type in any questions that you might have into that section there and I'll get full visibility of those. So ideally what I wanna do is, um, you know, ask those questions as they come up. So, you know, as, as we're going through the relevant content. So I'll be keeping an eye on all those questions um, and I shall, um, pose the questions to um, Patricia or Barry as they're going through the, the uh, presentation. Uh, something else to be aware of as well is that you can see there's a handout section um, in this control panel. And if you look in there, you'll see that there is a PDF of this presentation that we are going through today. Um, in addition to that, you'll also get an email tomorrow. And in that email tomorrow, it will have the recording of this session. So hopefully, um, you know, that should cover all angles in terms of, you know, if you want to look back on um, what we went through today. So I think that that's pretty much the boring stuff. Uh, I'm going to hand you over now to my colleague, Patricia. Uh, Patricia will just take us through uh, the agenda and um, what she's going to cover today. So uh, over to you, uh, Patricia. Thanks, Emilia and Catherine. Hello, everyone. I, I'm Patricia. I'm part of our solutions engineering team here in Titan HQ. And I'm very happy to go through this demonstration uh, with you. As um, Catherine mentioned, we're going to be covering the basic steps for uh, configuring your portal and also some advanced features for you as well to be aware. We want to make this session uh, more interactive as possible. So as my colleague mentioned, if you have questions, please send them. If you have feedback as well, we're going to be very happy to answer them as well. Just to cover our agenda here for today, uh, I'm going to be demonstrating uh, the basically steps to make sure your portal is correct, you are happy enough with the default language, uh, the country that you have selected on your portal there. Also, make sure uh, as well how to add eventually a logo to your portal, a bit of branding um, if you wish to do as well. So I'll be covering these steps with you. Um, then I will basically cover uh, user management management. So here we're going to see basically how uh, you can add users to the system. So there are three ways to do that and I will demonstrate for you. We're going to also see uh, the DMI, so our direct mail injection. So how to set up the DMI in a way that the phishing campaigns will be delivered uh, to your employees basically without um, extra configuration, just a matter of permissions. We're going to also be covering as well uh, the trust listing on Microsoft. This is for training quizzes campaigns um, as well. And um, just so you know, we know there are clients using uh, spam solutions, endpoint protection. So we're also going to cover uh, a bit of the trust listing uh, process as well, if in case you are using any spam solution or endpoint protection. 
We are also aware um, some clients do require S authentication to make sure, okay, their users can log into the portal okay, or uh, the authentication is there available for them. So I'm gonna also show you as well a bit of the SSO setup and also how to set up a training or phishing campaigns using your own domain. So I will cover this for you. Uh, Finally, I'm also aware uh, that are some MSPs attending this uh, webinar today. So we're gonna basically cover as well some of the tips, uh, some of the most common, let's say, configuration issues we see in the MSP side. So I will gladly uh, show off some of the mistakes and how to avoid it. And in the advanced features, uh, my colleague Barry is gonna go through the real-time integration, also fish hook and swordfish, and finally as well, how to integrate Safe Titan using your Microsoft Teams. So this is our plan uh, for today. So. And I want to make this more interactive as possible, so I will not be going only through slides here. I will make sure also uh, to jump between the platform as well, because I believe it's the best way to demonstrate uh, some of the features uh, for you. So in terms of the organization profile that I managed uh, in the beginning of uh, the presentation here, I want to um, show you that you do have the ability uh, to do a bit of branding on your own portal and make sure you are happy enough with all the details in there. So for this, under Organization uh, Manager tab, that is a sub-tab called Organization Profile, you can simply click on the Organization Profile this, this is a live demo, so you are seeing uh, really the system uh, as it is. I was logged out of my session, so I'm back here. So organization profile, you can go to um, the organization organization manager and then organization profile. And here you can see the basic uh, details of your portal as well. You can edit the name of your portal if you wish to do so. You can also select the organization sector you are in. This is very efficient in case if you're running phishing campaigns, for example, uh, you have an option also to compare the results, your phishing response comparing with other companies in the same sector. So it's very important to make sure you have the right sector selected in there. And um, in case that you see any uh, maybe um, miss uh, information or wrong information added there to your portal, you can actually edit this as well. Also through the organization profile, you have the ability um, to select uh, default phishing mail as well. And you can even uh, edit the way your phishing campaign is gonna be sent. So here I have information or info. You can edit this, uh, the default email there for uh, whatever you like really. So in this case, we can see if we were to send a phishing campaign, the default email would be this ectricks.com uh, here. And you do have an option of 21 domains you can um, select as well. Also, you can see you have the option to change the language of your portal, also your default language for training phishing uh, campaigns. So here, let's say, just an example, if you wanted the um, English from US, you have an option to select or UK or any other language really that you wish um, to add. You can also configure the time zone, so you can add the time zone you want. Um, this is ideal, right, to reflect also your training phishing campaign, so you can edit this. And in the default format as well, you can select, you can select the default uh, date format that you prefer. And finally, you can see also on the left side, there is a logo in there. So if eventually, if you wanted to brand your portal to add maybe the logo of your own organization, you're gonna have uh, an option to do that as well. So just a bit of branding here, if eventually you wanna make sure your portal is right, the information is correct, that is there available for you. So now I'll go through the configuration uh, as well, as I mentioned in my uh, previous presentation um, there. We are very often asked by the clients, okay, how we, how difficult it is to set up or what are, what are the main steps that I need to go through uh, in order to be fully able to use Safe Titan and start basically sending training and phishing campaigns. So in terms of the setup, I usually say the two main steps is first of all, making sure you have your users into the system and second of all, also making sure you have everything whitelisted so you are able to start running your campaigns. 
In terms of adding users to the system, basically there are three ways you can do that. So through the um, organization manager uh, tab here, uh, I will go to the next session, the user manager tab. And in the user manage tab, there is this organization users option. So the three ways you can actually add users to the system is uh, the first one manually. This is usually used, uh, let's say, if you just wanna basically start testing the platform with one or three users. For you to add the users to the system is very straightforward, actually. The main information here for you to be aware is in terms of the username. So the username would be your own email address. And the remaining information you can populate as it is. Also can select the country you are in. Um, the phone number here is usually used only, let's say, if you were planning to set this mission campaigns, otherwise it's not really a requirement and you can select your default language. I will not be adding any user to the system, but um, I just quickly wanted to show you this option is available. Another thing we get asked is, okay, Patricia, I have my team who is also uh, helping me to manage phishing campaigns, training campaigns, and I want to make sure my administrator has access to the platform and they can log in with their own credentials. So this is also possible through the, through the create admin option in here. The same interface as you saw before for the user login, you can simply create an account for your administrator. Once again, username would be their email address. Here under platform roles, you can see that are uh, a bunch of roles you can select. So let's say if you wanted your administrator to be able to see basically all the features of the system, the only thing that you are required to do is basically select all the features in here. There are 14. Uh, um, in the platform rows here, 14 uh, permissions basically. In case, let's say you would require your administrator to see only phishing manager or training manager, you can basically add only um, the permissions you want them to see. Once this has been done, you can simply save and um, your administrator will receive a welcome, uh, welcome email and they are able to log into the system from there. In terms of uh, administrator as well, it's very important to say, even though you add the administrator in there, you give all the permissions, there is one extra permission that is not there that you cannot see uh, through the platform row selections, um, selection, and this is actually the analytics uh, option. So for this, you can see under organization admin here who are the administrators of this specific demo portal and who are not. So I will just go to uh, Adam here. He's uh, one of the administrator just to show you the extra permission. So uh, under added uh, roles and permissions here, you can click the button and then add the permission. The only extra permission uh, required is the view analytics. So your administrator can also view uh, all these statistics into the portal as well. So once this has been selected, your administrator will have access basically to all the features there in the system. So now this um, would be how you would add the users manually. Another option for, um, let's say companies, especially the ones who are using Google Workspace or don't wanna go through the manual import, of course, but also do not have an Active Directory in, in place, would be um, doing the book uh, upload. So from here, you can see there is a CV, uh, CSV template available. You can basically download the template, populate with your own data, and then you can do an upload. After a uh, few seconds or a few minutes, your users will be there into the system as well. So now um, I will go through the through the uh, synchronization that we usually recommend um, and you'll find one of the most efficient ones. So in the directory synchronization, this is all the types of synchronizations we, we allow. So uh, on-premise, Azure AD, Okta, People HR, one login, but I will be covering the Azure AD one, okay? So uh, the Azure AD Sync here, you see you have an option to enable the Azure um, synchronization. So here, what we would require is, uh, what we would require is basically an application with your Azure environment. We do have articles available, documentation available for you with all the setup. So with that, you're gonna go to your Azure environment, you're gonna create, a, create an application for safe title. Once you create an application for safe Titan, we're gonna also ask you to create a secret um, key. And then you need to allow a couple of permissions in there for this application. 
one of the permissions, for example, for the Active Directory is directory.read.all. And once this has been done, this application will have application ID, secret uh, value, and also a tenant ID. So we're going to simply ask you to copy and paste the details into the relevant fields. You can see here I already did it, so I'm set uh, in there. Once this is done, you can simply save, so make sure your details are there, and then you can hit sync, so very simple. Um, also important to say, let's say, in case of organization having maybe, or in case that you don't want to import um, your whole Active Directory into the system, you're also able to specify a specific departments or groups that you want to import. So under group restrictions he here, you can see there is this option restrict to groups. So I, I'm going to go ahead and select restrict to groups. So let's say if I wanted to import my sales department or my IT department, my HR department only in this initial testing or just these are the departments that need training, for example, you can simply specify so this would be my HR group from my Active Directory. And I would also create a group here uh, based on that. So I would see in Safe Titan HR in there. In case that you wanted to add eventually more departments, you can simply uh, use a semicolon. So you use a semicolon and you can uh, add your other groups in here as well that you want to import. So in here, if I was uh, to restrict to groups, I would be importing only my users on HR, sales, and IT team, and I would trigger the sync. So as you could see, it would be a very straightforward um, setup in there. Very important to say as well, one of the common mistakes that we see in terms of um, active directory synchronization is sometimes we get um, clients saying, oh, my, my but my users weren't imported or the system only imported part of the users. Why? We see, for example, one of the most common mistakes are maybe copying the wrong details in the relevant fields, application ID or secret value or uh, mistyping, for example. Uh, another thing that we see uh, that can happen as well is, for example, uh, Active Directory missing attributes. So it's very important to have an Active Directory in order um, to this to work efficiently. And what I mean by that is eventually if you have a user on your Active Directory and maybe you are missing the first name or the surname or even email address, for example, um, this ADSync might fail. So um, we are basically mapping there the common attributes. So uh, first name, surname, email address, so important to have this in place. Also, um, I mentioned before as well that we do offer direct email injection. So with that, um, in the same application that we created before, we can make sure to add uh, three other permissions, and they are here mail.read, uh, mail.read and write, user.read, or as I mentioned before, we, we have all these in our documentation so we can make available for you as well. Once this has been done, you need to make sure to grant uh, the permissions. So that is there the API communication. In Safe Titan, the only thing that you are required really to go is um, you can go to the configuration tab. And in the configuration tab, you're going to see this phishing email uh, settings here. And this is, of course, for phishing campaigns. So I will select the Microsoft Graph API. In this case here, I already have added my tenant ID, so you cannot see an option to insert your tenant ID. But in case that I hadn't, you would see this showing up there for you, a blank field. So you could basically just populate with your tenant ID. And then the signing with Microsoft um, a button would show up here for you. The only thing you are required to do is sign in um, with your Azure Global Admin. And this is going to basically implement the direct email injection. Also on the top, this is going to change. So instead of a standard email delivery, this is going to be a Microsoft Enterprise application. From there, you can set your phishing campaign just to ensure uh, delivery as well. Um, so. This is um, the setup for the direct uh, email injection. Also want to tell you, uh, if eventually, of course, you're planning to run training campaigns, um, quiz um, campaigns as well, you also need to make sure to have our two IP addresses uh, whitelisted on your Microsoft. And this is also a list of domains uh, that we advise you to whitelist. And if you're using any spam protection, make sure to add our IP addresses to your whitelist. And the same for the domains. So just to mention, this is important. 
Um, in the same application that you did, you were able to do the full setup. So you can do the ADA sync, you can do the direct injection. Patricia, I'm just looking at some questions here as they come in. Um, so apologies if this is a bit delayed from, from your content. Um, <laughs> so just getting a question here about is, uh, it, is this for an MSP configuration site or a client site? That's an excellent question. Um, actually, this whole setup would be for uh, an end user. So for MSPs, it's much more straightforward now. Um, they have an option to um, basically in the setup, sign up process, they're going to receive a link. And with this link, they can uh, choose basically which option they want to go ahead. And one of the options uh, exactly says uh, AD Sync, DMI, and also SSO. So they don't need to do extra uh, steps in there. Everything is going to basically be done for them. They can basically just log into the system and make sure to trigger uh, the sync so their users will be imported, but there is no uh, really extra step uh, really needed. Um, yeah, and just another question in here. I know you covered different time zones there. Um, so just as uh, Louis uh, just saying that I live in P PR, my time zone is not there. I don't know if PR is, is Portugal or... So what different time zones are covered? Is there... Uh, that's an excellent. Uh, that's an excellent question as well. So uh, Microsoft um, Safe Titan is actually uh, deployed uh, also in the Microsoft infrastructure. So there are some default uh, time zones based on the region as well. If your region is not there, what I would advise you to do. There are multiple um, countries in that selection. So, um, of course, we are really concerned about having the right time in there for your campaigns and phishing. So, if eventually, if you notice, we can go through that with you, uh, Louis. But if eventually, if you notice your country is not in that selection, what I would advise you to do is maybe select a country that would reflect your time zone, because um, that would be our main concern of you having the wrong time zone. But if it is even the same country, same time zone, you wouldn't be really affected. Thanks, Patricia. Um, yeah, and then I just have another question here, you know, in terms of somebody says that they tried to create a user um, and the, um, the, they entered, they, they got the message that the entered username is invalid for this organization and they tried different emails. Like, would there be a reason for that or is there any advice that you can give? That's uh, that's also another very good question. Uh, sometimes when we see these um, errors, um, it could be related with the domain. So just let me go back here to our Safe Titan portal. If I go to the uh, organization manager and organization profile, um, actually, let me go here to the user manager. So if I go to the user manager and organization users, you can see here, all my users here, they are under a specific domain. So we can see some Hotmail, we can see some Cyber Risk Aware. So uh, if the organization has multiple domains, you need to let us know so we can make sure you have these domains added to your portal. Because by default, we're going to use uh, the email address you provided uh, to us. So we're going to set up your uh, portal with that email address. So if there are more, most likely these domains are not on your portal. So just let the, our team know and we can make sure your other domains are in there. Once this has been done, you should have no problem to add your users. That's great, uh, Patricia. Sorry, this is my apologies uh, to Louis. It was Puerto Rico he was actually talking about uh, in terms mm -hmm. of the time zone. So what would be the best one to select then for the Puerto Rico um, uh, time zone? So Puerto Rico, I would say, um, is uh, central, um, is central, right? Um, we can go through that uh, now, Louis. So let me go back here to the organization uh, manager. I would say uh, any country close to your location, uh, really. So I think we do have Puerto Rico available there. Um, yeah, there we go. So we do have Puerto Rico available here, Louis, for you. This can help. And um, and in terms of the country as well, is um, you can see some options in here. Like, uh, sorry, my geography is not helping me much uh, right now. Um, Central America, uh, if I'm not wrong, for Puerto Rico. Um, it's I think it's so, Atlantic so, Standard Time. Um, so anywhere 
drawing yeah. a, a linear line vertically on the on the globe um, if you could match it up with another yeah. time zone there or region um but you know if, if there are things like that that are missing um like a time zone absolutely let us know and, and we'll get those inserted for you yeah great and as Barry mentioned as well, this is also very important uh, feedback because, um, of course, uh, this is also based in maybe uh, most of our users, but if there are exceptions uh, to that list, this can always uh, be discussed and maybe implemented in the future as well. Great, thanks Patricia, great. <laughs> No problem. Um, so just to go back then uh, to the configuration, um, just want to quickly cover just more few aspects before giving the passing the mic over uh, to my colleague Barry. Um, in the same application that you created for your uh, Safe Titan, you also have an option as well uh, to make to set up the SSO, and this is for authentication. The only extra steps really that we would um, require in terms of the SSO configuration is on your application you're going to have this redirected uri uh, option so we would ask you to add this extra um, link in there the one signing uh, for uh, microsoft the out uh, link basically and once this has been done also in the advanced settings as well uh, you need to allow a token so this will be passed uh, to the safe titan application as well these are basically the only things you're going to have to do there on your application and then you can go basically to configuration and um, the authentication settings uh, in here basically to set up your SSO. So here you would select the Open ID Connect and you're going to paste uh, the relevant fields with the relevant uh, information. So the same client ID, the details of your application, your secret value, also the details of your application. The remaining information here, we provided everything that you need to add to the relevant fields on our article as well. So you you won't have to go uh, and do an extra research or anything like that is all available for you. Also, finally, um, also want to show you as well, some of our clients, they really ask, OK, but I want to make sure my domains are there. I want to send training or phishing campaigns from my domains. What do I have to do? For this, we ask you um, basically to add our IP addresses and domains uh, to your SPF records. And once this has been done through the platform for training, you do have an option to edit um, the default email address. So if I go back here to the my configuration settings, you see there is a training settings. We saw the default email address for phishing campaigns in the organization profile, but training is going to be under training settings. So training from email, you can add your own email address once you have changed uh, your SPF records, and you can also add the display name. If you're happy enough, you can hit save. In terms of uh, phishing mails, if you have your own domain, you can let us know as well, and we can make sure to add this uh, in the platform for you. Finally. Um, I will just quickly go through some of the tips uh, that we wanted to give to our MSP clients uh, as well, because as I mentioned before, we have seen sometimes MSPs are facing some troubles. So this is gonna be a very quick um, uh, presentation now for MSPs. Uh, this is the MSP um, uh, dashboard basically. And from here, one common mistake that we see with our clients is under the customer tab, the MSP can actually create an account for their customers. In the create an, uh, create an account for the customers, we see sometimes MSPs using uh, maybe random emails. It's very important to use a unique email address. Also, when we spin up the the portal we're going to basically get this domain that you are adding here for your client so i have added my email patricia titanhq.com for example so in this case my portal my safe titan portal would be titanhq.safetitan.com so this email address here needs to be unique and it's better if it is associated with your client's domain also under the subdomain here we see let's say for example here my email address is patricia at titanhq.com so we see maybe organizations adding um, titanhq.com this would give an error and you wouldn't be able really uh, to go ahead uh, with this setup 
uh, because we don't require really an extension. So just make sure you just add the subdomain Titan HQ with no extension in there. So my portal here would be titanhq.savetitan.com. So just uh, two things to mention. The MSP, once the portal has been created, they're going to have the ability basically to log in to their client's account. And also, um, the feed in, um, just to highlight the features in there, we are asked very often as well, oh, but I created a company, not happy, I want to delete it. Uh, this option is not available uh, yet for you, but you do have an option to disactivate uh, the portal, deactivate the portal if you wish to do so. And the reason why you cannot delete is because there might be training or phishing or users already added to your partner portal, uh, but we do allow you to disactivate. Also, once the client uh, portal is created as well, we are asked, okay, what can I change in there? Once you have submitted the portal creation, the only information you're really able to change is uh, customer name. So you can edit that. And you can also edit uh, the purchase uh, user account as well, if you wish to do so. Um, so just to go through briefly there, are some of the MSPs uh, common um, errors we see and to address that as well. So now I know I did most of the talking. <laughs> I will um, I will let my colleague um, Barry now uh, present as well. Okay. So. Um... Thanks, Patricia. That was fantastic. A lot of great detail in there that will hopefully help everybody configure their portal to their needs and their specific infrastructure. Fantastic. Um, Thanks, Barry. If you could make me presenter yeah there we go okay just a few additional features um, in swordfish I wanted to, to cover over um, these are features that may not be immediately discoverable out of the box or immediately obvi obvious like the, the default um, fishing and training um, they are the reactive training, the Microsoft Teams integration, the real-time integration, and Fishhook and Swordfish. Um, so if we start off with the Microsoft Teams training integration, and it is basically what it, it says on the, on the tin. It is your users having the ability to take their training within the Microsoft Teams client. And if we take a little look at it here, Oops, that's not Teams. Here we go, here's our, our, our Teams client. And if you're an organization that has an Office 365 subscription, it's your, your users will generally use Teams pretty heavily and be pretty used to it and very comfortable in that environment. So why not let them take their training in that environment as well? So let's say I'm in Teams here, my manager has sent me a message to say, you know, time to, complete your, your your training. Instead of having to receive that in an email and click on a link and go to the web browser the way it works out of the box, if you install the, the Teams uh, web app uh, or web add-in, um, all they have to do is click on their training icon. It'll automatically log them in and pop up their training within the Teams client. Very neat clean uh, solution for them. They, they, they know the Teams client pretty well, so it, it's easy for them to navigate it. And then here you have your some options around filtering and, and sorting your, your view of your training modules. So whether you want to see the videos, quizzes, interactive, whether you want to see your completed modules or not, or, um, or just the active modules. <clears throat> and when they want to start their training, they just click the, the start button on the whatever module it is, and it will start the module for them. And here we are straight into our video training module. And the modules will appear pretty much exactly the same as they do in on the web version. Um, so they can go ahead and their video will start up and play, and it's handling confidential data. We'll not go through it, all that. And they complete the training and will end, end up back at, at the start again once they have completed. And it's a very, very neat integrated experience for the users. 
Um, going back to where we were, um, the other pieces are reactive training. Um, reactive training is the concept of being able to attach a training to a phishing campaign and automatically assign users to that campaign based on their actions within the phishing campaign. So again, if we take a look at the UI around this, so this is the phishing campaign wizard. And we've gone through a few pages already selecting the templates and the targets and, and things like that. If we actually go back a couple of pages here where we are at the campaign options. And here we have the option of enabling reactive training for this phishing campaign. And once this, this will default off, but once you click it on, it will enable the reactive training uh, page within the wizard. <clears throat> and in here, you are assigning this training campaign to the phishing campaign. So you can select whatever training you want, whether it be our out of the box training or whether it's your own training that you have uploaded and that could be you know videos interactive or your own policies um, from your own organization um, you select the training you want that will be attached to this phishing campaign now so then you configure what criteria or events the users will do to trigger being enrolled in that training so if we publish this, the, the emails get sent out to the user's inboxes. Um, if they click on a URL in that email, then this trigger would be the one you would select if that's what you want to trigger on. Um, or if they open an attachment, or if there is an intermediary form, we'll say a fake login form attached to this phishing campaign, if they interact with that form, this would be the trigger you would select. So form entered means they have focused on an input field, whether it be username or password, they have clicked on it. And that will trigger that event. And they will be enrolled if you have this selected to yes. And form filled is if they try and type stuff in password field. And form posted is if they try to submit that form. Um, <clears throat> the normal behavior for the phishing campaigns, the default behavior is, you create the campaign, you send it out, the users interact with it. Um, over time, then it completes and you analyze the results. But here, it's just an added little tweak that allows you to actively enroll your users into training. So it's, it, it's, it's pretty useful. Um, beyond that, we have our real-time training um, this is more of an API um, and what this does it, it will ingest events from your organization um, primarily from seams um, the seam will analyze logs across your your entire organization and, and you build events from those logs um, based on queries that you perform across that information and those events can be forwarded to Safe Titan, and Safe Titan will take actions based on those events, like sending notifications to a user or assigning training to a user, <clears throat> that sort of thing. A couple of scenarios where where this is useful is, we'll say a user has visited, you know, a, a, a malicious website or, or or something like that, and your team has picked that up. It can send that event to us. We can you, you can configure Safe Titan to automatically send a safe browsing policy, your own safe browsing policy to that user to refresh their memory about what, what they're doing or automatically enroll them in training based around safe browsing um, within your organization. Or it, it can be used for onboarding experiences for, for new users. If you set up campaigns, um, that incorporate all your, your new user onboarding material. Um, you can have your Active Directory send us a signal every time a new user uh, logs on for the first time and Safe Titan will automatically send that user the on, all their onboarding training 
that they have to go through. So all their policies, videos, whatever, whatever it may be. So that you can build interesting and, and very useful scenarios using that um, the the, the real-time training functionality within within Safe Titan. Uh, the last one is Fishhook and Swordfish. Fishhook is an Outlook add-in, and it is used to allow your users to um, notify you of potentially malicious or, or phishing emails within the organization. So once installed, um, a, a button will appear in, in your user's Outlook uh, toolbar. Um, they will use that button, just click on it, and it, it will report the currently selected email to our Swordfish backend. And the Swordfish backend will dismantle that email, um, split it out into its headers, IP addresses, URLs, attachments, and, and run all that stuff through scanners um, and try and determine if there's anything dangerous or, or, or malicious in there. Um, if we take a quick look at the UI for Swordfish as well, we can see it here. This is the main dashboard for Swordfish. It, um, it's showing the last five reported emails and some some basic statistics at the bottom. Um, oh, that's the dashboard. If we look at the inbox. It shows a list of all the emails your users have reported to your admin, your your network admin or Office 365 admin. Um, who sent them? Who sent the reports? Where the email came from? The the time it was sent. Um, and you can drill down into more information about these emails. So if we select one of the emails here, go to view email, <clears throat> it'll show you the breakdown of that email. So the status is it passed the, all the scanners that it went through and it completed all the analysis. And this page gives you the basic information that shows you, you know, we didn't find any viruses or malicious URLs or IPs. Um, and you can drill down into the email. It has all the email and broken up for you here. So if you did want to do more investigation or, or know more about the email, it's, it's all here for you. So it shows you the, the basic content of the email, as it would uh, as you would see it in in, in your email client. Uh, it has all the headers here broken out for you. So if you wanted to drill down into the headers um, for more information, they're all laid out here for you to investigate. Um, we have some basic header rules here as well, telling you whether these rules exist um, within within the email as the URLs, <coughs> all the URLs that appeared in the content of the email and their result from the scanners it went through and whether they were valid or, or not. Similarly with the IPs, all the IPs that found in the headers and the content of the email and the result of the scans that it went through. And if there were attachments, they would be here as well. And their results from the scanner. Um, we have Yara rules as well, which are basically pattern matching rules um, that can pass over the content of the email. In, in general, Swordfish focuses more on the properties of the email, the header, the IP addresses, URLs, um, that sort of thing. It doesn't focus as much on the context of the email, um, the wording of the email. And that's where Yara rules come in. Um, you can use pattern matching rules to, to look at the content of the email for maybe keywords or, or phrases and, and things like that if, if you wanted to focus in more on on the content. Um, for example, if you're worried about the word credit card, you can create a, a YAR rule in here that will pattern match for that word and it will alert you if it finds that word within the content of the emails. Um, uh, Barry, can I just ask you something that's just coming through here just um, you know, to keep the questions up to date and that. Mm -hmm. I've just had a question here from Colleen. Um, if you were doing a phishing campaign, how do you keep from getting a large number of these phishing submissions? Um, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm not sure I understand. Yeah, I'm not sure I do Colleen. either. Sorry, Colleen, I don't know if you want to type more in there. Uh, if you're doing a phishing campaign, how do you keep from getting a large number of these phishing submissions? Um, 
I'm not sure that I fully understand. If you want to type in some more there, Colleen, um, feel free to to elaborate. Maybe. Me Maybe he meant, I don't know, if we're sending, let's say, fishing campaign to your organization and then, okay, swordfish is also available. So people will start reporting these uh, fishing campaigns and as a result, you're going to have more. Uh, um... Yeah, swordfish won't alert on our own uh, emails. We have, we, we have identifiers within our emails and swordfish is aware of them. So it, it won't bother doing a lot of analysis or reporting on our own e emails because we, we, we can identify them. Um, so it won't okay. it won't dirty the data, uh, the real okay. data, the, the live data. Okay, perfect. Hopefully that answers the question. Um, just one more there, Barry, as well, just a question. Um, in the MSP client, when I create a new client, I put my email to receive the welcome email because I'm configuring and managing the campaign for the user. The question is, if I use my company's email, is this going to bring problems when I enter the client's emails into our portal? Do you want me to repeat that? I know it's like... um, yeah, please. <laughs> Sorry, no, I was reading it there myself trying to figure it out. So, so when you're in a, 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 when you're at the MSP level, if you're creating a new client, yeah. and if you put in mm -hmm. your own email, as in the MSP's email, to receive the welcome email. Um, mm -hmm. The question is, if I use my company's email, is this going to bring problems when I enter the client's email? Yeah, the, when you're creating a client, whatever email address you put in there, they are automatically going to become the administrator of that client portal. Okay. Um, I would advise not using your own um, MSP um, identity. Um, if at all possible, it, it, it's better to, to use an identity that belongs to the customer themselves because um, that, is the that is going to be the administrator. It, it won't ca cause a problem as long as that user has not been added to any other portal. If you are already using that uh, email address, we'll say within your MSP portal, if then trying to add a customer with the same address is going to cause a problem. Okay. And additionally, you, you, you have to be aware of the discussion that happened earlier, that when you create um, a portal, whether it be an MSP or a customer, we extract the domain xyz.com and we add automatically add that to the allowed domains for that portal. So if you create a customer using your own domain, that domain will be added to the customer portal, but the customer's domain won't automatically be added. So you will have sure. to instruct us that that domain needs to be added as well. Perfect. That's great, Barry. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, yeah, we were just looking at, at Swordfish here. Just a, a few little bits left. Um, in here, we have the templates. Um, when a user sends... Uh, an email to be analyzed um, they can get a, a an email an email back to say thank you for for reporting this email so your user template here you can you can modify these templates to be whatever you want put in your own logos and say you know thank you for keeping our organization safe and 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 w whatever sentiment you want you you want to put in there and um, you have your admin templates as well these are the, the reports that are going to be sent to an admin when when an email is is sent in for analysis. Um, again, you can modify these, and there's tokens and things you can insert there. Um, <clears throat> this is the the CRA lure template. This is what we were talking about earlier. How Swordfish is aware of its own templates, so it can detect that it's one of ours and and send an, a different type of message back to to your users. Um, Yara rules, as we discussed further, you, you can create your own Yara rules if you want to analyze particular content of an email or sentiment of an email. You, you can add your own Yara rules in here, and they will that content will be detected within uh, the email. So if you want to put in, like we said, the word credit card or something like that, that's a very 
simplistic version, but you can make these R rules as simplistic or as complex as you want to match what it is you're looking for within um, <clears throat> the email content. Um, just two things I wanted to mention on the settings for Swordfish. We have found that in some cases, for whatever reason, there, there can be latency between an organization and their Office 365 exchange. In most cases, it's fine, but there, there, are, there are some cases where that there seems to be a little latency. Fishhook will try to communicate with the exchange server. If it doesn't receive a response within a certain period of time, it will deem that there's something wrong with the exchange server. Um, it kind of defaults to five seconds, which nine times out of 10 is perfectly fine. But if you are getting reports from your users saying that um, Fishhook is reporting an error saying it can't communicate with your exchange server, you, you you can extend the timeout that Fishhook is responding to here. You know, set it to 20 seconds, um, and it will usually get you past past that issue. If your Exchange server is not responding within 20 seconds, then you know we we have to assume that there's something more serious going on there. So that's something we 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 can't do anything with. Um, but like I said, 99 out of 100 times. You know this will solve solve the problem. The one other thing is the action that Fishhook will take once a user reports an email. So a user will click the button, it'll report the email to us, and then it will take a particular action on that email. And that action can be either of three things. It can be nothing. It'll just leave the, the email as is. It can send it to the user's junk folder automatically, or it can delete it from the user's uh, mailbox completely um, and get rid of it. Um, the other settings are fairly obvious. It's around scanning, you know, you can switch off the IP scanning or the error rules and things like that. The reporting, who to send the reports to, um, acknowledgements, what, what um, if you want to send reports to your admins based around our simulated lures, or if you want to filter those out, you can filter them out. And if there are any <clears throat> additional places you want to forward the reports to, you can. The analysis tab um, is about how you want to treat each of the detections. So if an IP address is detected as bad, how do you want to mark it? Generally, you'll want to leave the, that as unsafe or you can set it to warning or, or safe, but unsafe is, is perfect for that. And down here, your Yara rules. If you just want those to be a warning or you want it to actually mark the, the email as unsafe, you can, you can change those settings down here. And finally is the exchange settings. Um, Fishhook's uh, default behavior is to use Microsoft's um, more modern REST APIs for communication with the Exchange servers. But if you have an older Exchange, for whatever reason, you can force Fishhook to use the older Microsoft um, Exchange Web Services communication um, if, if you're not compatible with the, the newer REST APIs. And that is basically Fishhook. Um, in a nutshell, um, just one thing to add on top of that is it, if you wanted to install Fishhook or the, the Teams integration, it, it is very straightforward, very simple. Um, it's just a matter of, of your, your Office 365 admin pointing towards uh, a simple XML manifest within um, the Office 365 deployment center and within minutes it's all done and, and, and set up for you. Um, I think I've actually on over a little, so I'm I'm going to stop now and then pass back over to Catherine for any questions. Thank you. Thanks, Barry. Um, no, that's great, Barry. Uh, we've actually got through an awful lot of the questions here. Um, most of them actually. Um, just going through. There's just a few more. Um, so this one here, um, maybe you covered this, Patricia. I'm not sure. Uh, can I send notifications to my user? that he or she needs to complete training. Oh, perfect. Uh, yes, uh, you can. And you're going to have an option actually uh, to set the notifications when set up your uh, 
your training campaign basically so you can adjust uh, if that notification is going to be sent to your user one day before or in any specific date and time so this is available for you under the training manager uh, when setting up your campaign so that's possible okay yeah, but, it's, uh, it, it, the, the setting is under we have a reminders section yeah. for for okay training so you can set multiple reminders there if, if you wanted to um so so i got to ask yeah, this question again it was the similar one that you answered barry and if we can't if we're not interpret, interpreting the question correctly um you know don't worry we'll reach out to you separately and we'll, we'll resolve it but I'll, I'll give it another shot here um so, so as an msp I will manage your campaign and I put my email as an admin. My client, in this case, a university, will not create an email for me. I'm not understanding this question. It's actually quite difficult to read out. Uh, I need to use my email as an admin. And man, yeah, I think I'm probably going to have to reach out separately on this because it's quite hard to interpret the question. Uh, um, I, I, think, I, I think what they may be getting at is that, you know, this person is an MSP. They, they have their own domain, we'll call it msp1.com but yeah. they're managing they're managing a university or a college or whatever it may be and the college will not allow them to create their own identities on the college yeah. we'll go college1.com so the, the, I, I didn't so I quite catch your email yeah he's saying or she i need to use my email as an admin mm -hmm. and manage the campaigns and trainings i need help with this to make it possible does that make yeah. sense oh okay. yeah yeah we we can absolutely help um if you want to get in contact with us and, and give us more detail about the scenario you're you're looking to create here, we can absolutely help. Um, it it is entirely up, yeah. entirely possible, but yeah, yeah. After the webinar, we 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 can sort that out. Perfect. I can follow off on that. I can follow off on that afterwards. That's fine. Uh, it's no problem. It's a you know it's a little bit tricky just to make sure that we're getting the right um, we're answering the right question. Um, just another one then um, about is it possible to edit phishing templates? <laughs> yes, it's uh, absolutely uh, possible um, as well. Uh, once setting your um, phishing campaign in the phishing manager tab, you're going to see there is an option, there is a drop down option, and there you can actually, actually clone, uh, you can clone one of our templates if you wish to do so, and you can edit uh, any information from the templates we have available, or if you want to create a phishing um, template by default this option is also available for you so you can have your own uh, simulated phishing campaign from zero if you wish to do so um i also wanted to 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 answer another thing there i was having a look um just to uh, refer to i think louis question about uh, the time zone for puerto rico <laughs> uh, i managed to check yes uh, louis uh, we do have the country in there the default language uh, the default time zone is not there for puerto rico but uh, we do have available new york uh, north america and as far as i could see it's the same time zone so why you don't have an option to select your own specific time zone there. If you select uh, New York, North America, you're gonna ha have the same time zone basically, okay? So just to refer to, to your question there in the beginning of our uh, webinar. Catherine, do you have any other question there for us? You might be mute. <laughs> yeah. We can't hear you, Catherine, I'm afraid. <laughs> yeah, you're still in mute. The inevitable technical difficulties <laughs> in <laughs> webinars. <laughs> but that was great. We lost her just in the almost in the end of our webinar <laughs> there. But hopefully <laughs> she will be back. <laughs>
Are you having any any joy, Catherine, or do you want us to to move on? <laughs> Looks like she's going to retry adding herself. Yeah, mm -hmm. she's going to rejoin. Um, I think we're we're up to time at this at this point anyway. So I, I don't know if Catherine is going to be able to to rejoin or not. Um, we'll give her a minute or so, and then if she's not there by then, I think we 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 will wrap up because we we've hit the hour now anyway. We'll we'll not hold people up any further. And we hope also this session was uh, useful when we were able to clarify uh, some of your questions uh, there and uh, basically show other features of the product uh, as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, just to add, we will, we will be having more webinars in the future. So if there are any features or aspects of Safe Titan that you are interested in, that you would like, like us to drill down into further, like the reactive training or, or, or uh, real-time training or teams or, or whatever it may be, um, let us know in the chat and we will you know, create, be creating more webinars uh, in the near future and we can drill down into those, those features for you. Absolutely. It doesn't look. It doesn't look like Catherine's going to make it back. I think uh, <laughs> something has, has gone technically wrong on, on her end. <laughs> so I think we'll we'll wrap it up there. So um, thanks everybody for for joining us. Um, I hope there was some useful information for you in there. And like I say, if there's anything else you want us to focus on, let us know, and we'll do that. And any questions, we we we. we any questions we haven't answered already, we we will address those um, after the webinar. Mm 